I'm David, your developer on duty, and in this video we're gonna have a look at WebAssembly. In our current software development world, there's a high level of fragmentation. We have so many different programming languages and usually they don't interrupt very well. That means if you solve a business problem in one language, chances are high that you have to rewrite your functionality if you want to use it in another language. This requires a lot of effort, time, and in the end, money. Wouldn't it be great if you could just write some functionality once and compile it to an intermediate representation, which then can be used in a variety of programming languages, and all that without generating too much runtime overhead? Welcome to WebAssembly. So, WebAssembly is a standardized bytecode format, and you can run it with a virtual machine. You may know this mechanism already from the Java virtual machine. But WebAssembly is specifically designed for the web, where you want to download, load, and execute your resources quickly and efficient. One might say it's a compilation target for the web, but with its unique features, it also might be suitable for use cases outside the browser. In the end, it's secure because of its sandbox model, allows for small binary sizes, reaches near native execution speed, and runs on many systems. And these are all properties which are also desired for most programs in general, not just for things which run in the browser. Nowadays, business software usually runs in the cloud, on servers which are owned by large corporations. You just buy compute, and the rest is handled by those companies. First, they used virtual machines for that, but this is rather heavyweight and therefore costly. Then there came Docker, introducing container technologies, which are a lot more lightweight. But with WebAssembly, we finally have a technology which is even more suitable. You might know of the famous tweet by Solomon Hikes, the founder of Docker. It reads, If Wasm and Wasi existed in 2008, we wouldn't have needed to create a Docker. That's how important it is. WebAssembly on the server is the future of computing. A standardized system interface was the missing link. Let's hope Wasi is up to the task. So what is Wasi? WebAssembly can only interact with the outside world through APIs and Wasi is an initiative to define a common way to do so. You will be able to access the file system, network sockets and other resources. But without additional measures, this would be dangerous. So Wasi uses a capability-oriented security system. Resources are defined by Unix-like file descriptors and the calling processes need the associated capabilities to use them. But how does interoperability work in practice? Each programming language defines their own language constructs like functions, structs, enums, etc. So how would you define an interface which can then be implemented by different programming languages? This seems like an impossible task, but there are some efforts to standardize this. This effort is commonly known as the WASM component model. So the goal is to define a way to allow to compose separately compiled WebAssembly modules across languages with a defined interface. This interface can be described in the WID format. There's this nice little online demo page where you can explore the WID format. So on the left side, you can see the WID format. It allows you to define constructs like records, variants, enums, functions, and so on. On the right side, you can see that one is able to generate the respective native constructs in various languages, here TypeScript. In this example, we define in a language agnostic way a record person with properties name of type string and age of type u32 and a function called hello, which takes a person as an input variable and returns a string. And with that, we can generate the language bindings, in this case TypeScript, where we get an interface person with name string age number, and we also get the function hello, which takes a person and returns a string. But we can also generate this for other languages, for example, Rust. So in Rust, we don't have an interface, but we have structs. So we create a struct person with name of a str and age of a u32, and also this function hello, which takes a person and returns a string. Now the question is, how to use that in actual code? Here I've put the same example in a WID file. This defines our interface, the person and the function hello. Now let's create an implementation for this interface using Rust. First, I use the WID bind and Rust export macro to load up the interface definitions. Then the only thing left to do is to implement the trait, which is automatically generated by this macro for my sample struct sample. And here I just need to implement the function hello, which takes a person and returns a string. So I just 
return some string based on the input parameter. Now let me compile this to wasm. Cargo build target wasm32 wasi release. Consuming this WebAssembly module based on this interface is also quite easy. First, I use the wid bindgen rust import macro for the same interface file, sample.wid, and then I can actually use it. I can create this person struct with name David, age 35, and then I can invoke the sample hello function and print the output. Now let's also compile this to wasm. Cargo build target wasm32 wasi release. The only thing left to do is to run this code, but you would need to link it together, which is a bit cumbersome and therefore not done in this video. After all, the WebAssembly component model is still in its early stages and there are certainly rough edges here and there. I hope I could spark your interest in WebAssembly and its current development. Personally, I can't wait for this to become mainstream. It would allow a whole new way to compose programs. So let's wait and see what the future will bring. What are your thoughts on that? Please post it in the comments. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and stay tuned.